To translate the Peace Corps idea into reality, President Kennedy chose a successful businessman who had been, up to that time, head of the Chicago Board of Education, and incidentally, a very longtime friend of mine in Chicago, Sergeant Shriver. Sergeant, how are you? I'm fine, Dave. How are you? Good to see you. I'm fine, too. Uh, don't see how you're so fine and healthy looking with the job you've done. It must have been a great drain, I should think. Uh, I remember back in the early days of the Corps, people didn't believe in it, did they? Well, I think you're right. In the early days, uh, Dave, uh, a lot of people thought it was uh, a joke. Uh, many of the experts laughed at the ideas that, that Americans would volunteer to serve abroad for practically no money and under difficult living conditions. At that point in the Peace Corps history, we had two jobs, I thought. First, to find out whether America could still produce tough-minded, dedicated people. And second, to find out whether foreign countries really wanted the help of Americans of that type. Sarge, how did you find the answers to these questions, and what were they? Well, we found the answer to the first question by calling for volunteers, and we were overwhelmed with plenty of Americans with brains and character who wanted to serve their country abroad. On the second question, we went on a trip around the world to find out whether foreign countries really wanted Americans of this type. We found out that they definitely do. These facts are no longer a matter of opinion. We've been invited to send the Peace Corps to more than 50 countries. Every country where the Peace Corps is already at work has asked us to send more Peace Corps volunteers. For example, in the Philippines, I learned that the government there is trying to improve education in the rural schools. They've got to learn English and mathematics and general science if that country is going to continue to grow and prosper. One Philippine leader uh, explained it to me in these words. He said, we've got the mind and the heart to do these things. Our people are ready to move, but we need your skills to help us start. Here in Ghana, the story was the same. We can build the classrooms, I was told, but we can't supply the teachers. In the Peace Corps' first year in Ghana, our 51 volunteers taught or came into direct contact with 43% of all the pupils enrolled in Ghana's secondary schools. Ghana has since asked us for three times as many volunteers. Teachers, of course, are only a part of the need. Here in Brazil, as in other South American countries, they wanted Peace Corps volunteers to work on farms to help develop better methods of agriculture and rural homemaking. Our volunteers have received a warm and generous reception everywhere in South America. Country after country requested trained Americans to provide middle-level manpower. Engineers, teachers, builders, mechanics, nurses, social workers, home economists, farmers, surveyors, and so on. It became apparent that they want more than manpower. Asha Davy, a famous associate of Mahatma Gandhi, expressed it this way, Dave. She said, you think that young Americans possess the spiritual values they must have to bring the spirit of your country to our country? There's a great valuelessness spreading in the world, she said. Your volunteers must bring us more than science or technology. They must touch the idealism of America and bring that to us. Finding the people who combine the right skill with the right spirit is an incredibly difficult and delicate task. And the man who knows most about it is Dr. Lowell Kelly. He's director of the Peace Corps Selection, chairman of the Department of Psychology at the University of Michigan, and former president of the American Psychological Association. And here is Dr. Kelly to tell us a little about the selection process. Fortunately, our task of selection is made easier by the fact that each day we receive a large number of applications from well-qualified and highly motivated Americans. Our task is to see to it that each of these applicants has an equal opportunity to be fairly considered for each of the Peace Corps projects which we are manning. Practically all of the information on the application form is then transferred to an IBM computer tape for ready accessibility. Reference forms are typically mailed to 12 persons who have known the applicant in school, at work, or in his community. Those who respond are unusually candid, sensing the importance of helping us select the kind of American they wish to see as representative of the United States overseas. Non-competitive Peace Corps placement tests are administered quarterly at over 400 centers throughout the United States. All materials for each applicant are then reviewed by a specially trained professional staff, which evaluates the applicant to determine the kind of person he is, what he can do, and how well he can do it. Those selected are invited to training for a specific project. Each person invited has the right to decline the invitation if he or she feels that they are better qualified for some other project or some other country. 
about two out of three whom we invite accept our invitations to training. After initial selection, Peace Corps volunteers get from two to three months of intensive training in this country before they're finally assigned overseas. They get training in the language and in the lore of the country to which they'll go, and an understanding of its culture and its customs, and a sharpening up of their own skills. They get in the best possible physical shape for their new way of life, which usually is more rigorous and more demanding than that that they've been used to. Many Peace Corps volunteers are not college graduates. Many are. Some of the most valuable and skilled people in the Peace Corps have never even been to college. Others have been out of college for several years. The Peace Corps college training program makes each one richer in knowledge and better able to give to others. Here at Rutgers University, a group of volunteers scheduled to work in agriculture and community development in Colombia, South America, are learning the language of that host country. At Ohio State University, another group here of Peace Corps volunteers gets ready for its assignment in India. In this modern language laboratory, they're getting their first taste of one of India's many languages, in this case, Punjabi. At Texas Western College, a group of volunteers are getting classroom training and field training, too, for their project in Tanganyika in Africa, which is the surveying and building of farm-to-market roads in that country, and to make geological surveys to discover untapped mineral wealth. For many volunteers, the next stop after stateside training is the Peace Corps camp in Puerto Rico. Here, each volunteer is given a taste of the rigorous life that he or she will lead for the next two years. Here in Puerto Rico, volunteers are not only given physical conditioning, but a good deal of preparation for the emotional challenges that they will face. No volunteer is asked to do more than he can, but each is asked to find out how much he can do, and then to do it. Not all volunteers get training this strenuous. Physical conditioning depends on the volunteer's age, ability, and the job he'll be doing. Good health and adaptability is the aim, not bulging muscles. In Puerto Rico, volunteers live for a while with Puerto Rican families in one of the remote villages. And in this way, they get a first-hand understanding of the close personal relationship which they will have to develop with the people of the country in which they will serve. Serve for two years in the Peace Corps. The Peace Corps is open to qualified American citizens over 18 years of age. There is no upper age limit. And men and women in their 50s and 60s are already overseas with the Peace Corps. Volunteers who have dependents cannot be accepted, but husbands and wives can serve together if both qualify for the same project. The prime requisites are simple, and I think perhaps you have sound health, emotional stability, maturity, willingness to work with other people, initiative, and a desire to serve. Those are the prime requisites. The length of service is two years, which includes training time and volunteers will receive allowances to cover their food, clothing, housing, medical care, incidentals, and a termination payment of $1,800, based on $75 for each month of service. Peace Corps volunteer questionnaires are available right now from your post office, your congressman, or your senator. If you're tired of talking about a better world and you'd like to do something about it, the Peace Corps may very well be your answer. Peace.